Hello everyone, my name is Fei Yu. Today is my pleasure to be here and present our paper. I would like to thank my mentor Yan and collaborators from Meta Reality Lab Research for their guidance and support on this work. AR head warning displays have the great potential to support everyday information needs in the future. In current AR operating systems, virtual content defaults to be word anchored. They stay at a fixed location until being manually moved by the users. Such setup offers limited mobility to the AR content. User often loses complete access of their virtual applications after moving to a new space. There are three common solutions to transition the AR UI applications. Tag along, in which virtual content loosely stay in the user's field of view and follow them around. Drag and drop, in which users manually grab and move the virtual content to a new location. And reinstantiate, in which users reopen and place the target app at a new space via a menu. There are obvious limitations to these methods. For example, the error content would become intrusive and obtrusive while following the user around, or they would consume continuous input and attention from the users during manual interactions. Inspired by current mobile phone interfaces, a better solution could be that we offload different levels of user control to the system. For example, if we offload some user control to the system, similar to the Siri suggestion feature on iOS, the system could suggest some possibly needed apps, and the user hold the final control over which app to open. If we transfer the user control entirely to the system, the system would surface the predicted app in front of the user automatically without any input needed. In this research, we are interested in learning about how combining different levels of automation and user control could help transition AR UIs on the go. To understand the challenges with current UI transition mechanisms, we conducted a body storming design workshop. We recruited five participants from the industry with rich experiences in AR, VR, or MR. We built a prototype application on Microsoft HoloLens 2. In the prototype, participants had access to eight rigid UIs to assist their daily task. And we implemented the three existing solutions mentioned earlier to transition these UIs to different locations. The workshop was conducted remotely. Participants were asked to install the application on their HoloLens 2 device and conduct a sequence of tasks in their own home environment. The tasks required them to move between three indoor spaces, the home office, the kitchen, and the living room. In each space, they needed access to at least one AR widget UI to assist their real-world tasks. Participants were asked to identify pain points during the tasks and brainstorm about potential solutions to these challenges in an online co-design workshop. Our results highlighted three common challenges. First, placements of the widget UIs. Participants complained that the placements and organization took a lot of unnecessary effort. Second, awareness and recall. Participants mentioned that they often forgot why and where an app was placed beforehand. And last, high effort acquisition, in which participants wish they did not have to reopen an app manually just to look at some simple information. In the design workshop later, three solutions stood out and received the most votes from the workshop participants, which are wrist-based glanceable UIs, snap to plans or objects, and everything in the right place at the right time. After figuring out the major challenges and potential solutions, in a second study, we developed three interfaces to help transition AR UIs with different levels of automation and controllability. Due to the pandemic and to avoid unstable multi-room tracking with current AR systems, we developed a VR simulated AR environment for evaluation. The environment included three rooms, a home office, a kitchen, and a living room. Participants could move between these rooms by touching a button on the virtual door. So we were able to reuse the same working area in the physical world to simulate the transition procedure and interaction in different spaces in the virtual environment. In this task, Participants were asked to imagine that they were the owner of this virtual home. They interact with various objects in daily tasks while wanting to know some information in the AR application. For example, they want to know what to pick up next for a recipe after opening up the fridge. Thus, a multiple choice question pops out near the object, simulating their thoughts of mind. And participants had to check an AR app to answer the question as fast as possible while prioritizing accuracy. As shown in the video on the right, in a single trial, participants follow the virtual instruction board, go to a different room, use the object, and access the AR widget 
to answer the question popped out in front of them. Inspired by the solution in the design workshop, we developed three interfaces with different levels of automation and controllability. First, wrist pack, in which after users enter a new space, all AR apps would be attached to the user's wrist automatically. Users could open an app by grabbing it out of their wrist. The second solution was called semi-auto. In this condition, the system would suggest three most relevant apps on the user's wrist when the question was asked, and the user could pick which app and when to place it. And the third solution was called fully auto. As its name implies, the system would automatically place the widget it thinks the user might need without any input from the user. And the user cannot interfere with the system's choices. Last, we also included drag and drop and tag along interfaces as a baseline for comparisons. In this condition, users would always have to recall where they left a widget and retrieve it manually, simulating existing solutions in current AR operating systems. To learn more about users' perception towards the prediction errors, we simulate imperfect prediction accuracy. In both semi-auto and fully auto, the system would suggest the wrong application 25% of the time. However, since user had no control in fully auto condition, a higher cost was induced to recover from the error. We conducted a fully remote and unsupervised user study using the Discal platform with 40 regular MetaQuest 2 users. We collected both objective and subjective measures for evaluations. Here shows a summary of the key findings from our second study. First, we found that semi-auto performed the best both subjectively and objectively. Second, we found that baseline performed the worst both subjectively and objectively. Third, we found that fully auto led to a lower level of agency compared to the more manual conditions. Fourth, we found semi-auto led to an equal or higher level of agency compared to the more manual conditions. Last, we found that the sense of control and the ease of error recovery were the determination factors for user experience. Our results highlighted three lessons learned. First, current solutions are not good enough to transition error UIs, and we need to develop ultra-low friction interfaces on the go when users have limited cognitive bandwidth available. Second, similar to the semi-auto condition, we need to combine and balance automation with controllability to create the best usability outcomes without agency being compromised. And last, we need to research ways of failing gracefully with backup plans to enable users to recover from the prediction errors. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. Please refer to our paper for more details.